Hij is hier uit, uit Canada, Chris Sky. that I'm here today. It's also not a coincidence that your farmers and ranchers started a big movement after they saw our little trucker convoy in Canada. When I spoke to millions of Canadians in Ottawa, we finally achieved what I've been trying to do for over two years. We got enough people to come together and just say no to all of the government's restrictions. And when you can do that, when you can get enough people together to just say no, we call it United Non-Compliance. And since day one, I've been telling people that that is the only way we get out of this. That is the only way you get your rights and freedoms back. That is the only way you preserve the future for your children and their children. They had you believe that you needed to comply. Don't question authority. They had you believe that individual rights and freedoms were not only paramount to a successful society, but now to be seen as selfish and even dangerous. They had you believe that your compliance was a virtue. It has never been and it has never will be a virtue. They had you believe that you were saving people's lives by wearing a mask and taking an experimental gene therapy injection that they're falsely calling a vaccine. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a scam from day one. And that scam has been to try to convince you that giving up your rights and freedoms and giving up your children's futures is all a temporary solution to a problem called COVID. The reality is the only thing COVID was about is power and control. That was phase one of United Non-Compliance, waking up the world to the reality that COVID had nothing to do with your health and safety and everything to do with control. I was so convinced that I actually wrote a book aptly titled Just Say No, the first and only book in the history of the world to be banned by Amazon the day before it went on sale. And it was because I broke down United Non-Compliance into the three main components. And these three main components are key to waking the world up, getting our freedoms back, and making sure this could never happen again. Phase one was the global awakening. Waking up everybody to the fact that this is about control. Phase two, I called taking action. And we started taking action with protests, with lawsuits, with fundraisers, with nonprofit organizations. And it culminated in the trucker convoy in Canada. And that's the reason that countries around the world started removing the mask and started getting rid of the mandate and started getting our freedoms back. We fought back and we won, ladies and gentlemen. But the war, and this is a war, don't make any mistake, the biggest psychological warfare operation in the history of mankind. We won the battle, but we did not win the war. 
COVID wasn't about COVID. COVID was and always has been about giving up your rights and freedoms and then putting you into a system of perpetual servitude. Universal basic income is still their goal. A digital biometric identity is still their goal. A vaccine passport style system where they can force any medical procedure on you in order to obtain your new government benefits is still their goal. And ultimately, a digital currency tying this all together is still their goal. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not some pipe dream. 105 countries around the world at this very moment, representing 95% of the world's GDP, are in the workings of making their own digital currency. China is really far ahead with theirs. Their digital currency is so advanced, get this ladies and gentlemen, they plan on giving it an expiry date. So imagine you're getting your wages directly into your bank account. But if you don't spend your money in the next 45 days, the government takes it back. How would you ever get ahead? How would you ever save? How would you ever allow your children any better opportunities than you would have? Answer, you can't. How would you even buy anything? Answer, you can't. That's where the WEF, the World Economic Forum, came up with a wonderful slogan. You will own nothing and be happy. This is their way to do that. If you can get a person, first on universal basic income, meaning they cannot make ends meet each month without the government assistance, already the government no longer serves you. You depend on them. Now the government rules you. And the rest of it, the digital identity, where you're going to have to literally identify yourself at every single transaction. Imagine that. Imagine that. And I don't have to. My friends in the UK are already seeing it. They go to buy a grocery bill, 30 pounds. They go to tap their bank card because, you know, 99.9% .9 of people don't use cash anymore. And the tap doesn't work. And they get a little error on their phone and it says, oh, you got to type in this PIN number in order to access your bank account. Why are they doing that? Because they want you to get used to the idea that you need to identify yourself for every transaction. And they want it to be an onerous process. So when they offer you a solution called a digital ID to do it automatically for convenience, now it becomes commonplace that every single transaction you make is on record. No more private transactions, which means every transaction you make is at the behest of the government. They get to choose what you buy, when you buy, how much you can buy. And if you go over their limits, they can automatically deduct it from you. That's the world we're heading in. It has nothing to do with COVID. The vaccines and all the rest of it were just more control and money making. The more people they inject, the more people they kill, the more people they get sick, that equals more money, more profits, and more control. It's that simple. It's that sinister. It's that calculated. And now, because we fought back, because they were forced to change tactics, they didn't stop what they're doing. They're still moving full steam ahead. They just changed tactics because we figured out their plan. So now they're reacting to us. But what are they doing? You see it firsthand. New environmental regulations that are going to absolutely cripple your agriculture industry. And it's not by accident, it's by design. They want to create a crisis. They want to create suffering so they can get more control out of it. And if, a, and if COVID doesn't work, climate change is the perfect solution. Think about it. Two years ago, individual rights and freedoms were paramount. Then COVID came along and you were told the mantra that you need to give up your rights and freedoms temporarily for your family's safety. Sounds reasonable. Now that we got to that part of incrementalism, now they're going to switch it over to climate change. A pandemic can only last a few years. A climate crisis can last generations. And now the new mantra is, you need to give up your rights and freedoms 
for the good of the planet. That human being has just been taken out of the equation completely. From two years ago, each and every one of you was an individual with rights and an individual that matters. And as of today, each and every one of you is a cancer and a problem on the earth that needs to be controlled cradle to grave. That is a huge switch in mindset that they've pulled over the population on the last two years. But that's their biggest problem because before they could call us a fringe minority, they could call us conspiracy theorists, they could call us anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers, racists, extremists, even terrorists. But what are they going to call the masses and masses of people around the world that are angry because they simply can't afford to heat their home or feed their families? What are they going to call like anti-fooders? Like, no, the silent majority need not stay silent anymore. They all have a reason to fight. They are coming for the food on their children's table. And why the Netherlands? And why Canada? Why are we two at the forefront of this? That's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Netherlands is the number one food supplier for all of Europe. All of Europe. You guys are amazing. And that's why they want to destroy 30% of your food supply. That's why they want to put generational farming families out of business, out of work, retire them with compensation. Because they want to cause a crisis. They want your food prices to go up just like your energy prices are going up. Because then at six months later, when they talk about universal basic income, a larger portion of you are going to be supporting it. Because you're not going to have a choice. That is their new game plan. To literally starve you into submission. Like every other tyrannical regime in the history of mankind. That is why they had the Queen's funeral. Coincidentally, when I happened to be there with this scumbag Trudeau, Biden, and the rest of them, over 500 world leaders converged on London that weekend. And if you think it was to look at an old lady in a box, you got another thing coming. It was to plan the next phase. And their next phase is a worldwide global recession. They're going to try to destroy economies and industries and individuals they're going to try to cause as much disruption as possible so they can become the saviors again this is not over ladies and gentlemen the battleground has just changed and it's going to hit a lot closer to home for everybody the vast majority of people didn't care about covid until it affected them personally even the mass didn't bother them it wasn't until somebody was told oh take this jab or you're going to lose your job that the majority started waking up. And then after the people who got coerced into taking the jab, and I use that because they all pretend like they had no choice. How many times have you guys heard, I had no choice, I had to travel, I had to keep my job, I had to do... No, you had a choice. And every single person I know that made the choice to remain a pure blood does not regret their decision. Even if they had to get another job, period. Period. That's what pure blood really means. It doesn't necessarily mean just, oh, they're unvaccinated. No, it means they're pure of heart, pure of soul. They had stood to their convictions, and they took the consequences of their supposed free choice. And I don't know one person that regretted that choice. But how many of you know someone who regrets taking the jab? That's what I thought. And you can't go back after taking it. And every shot you take is going to make you sicker. We know that. They published the results in Canada. We had a very good statistical reporting section in every single province. Very easy, very neat. All you have to do is click on a tab called COVID statistics for whatever province and vaccine outcomes. And it would show you the percentage of the population in the hospital for COVID and how many jabs they had. Zero, one, two, or three. By May 2021, over 80% of the people in the hospital in every province in Canada had received at least one COVID jab. 50% of the people in the hospital had received three. So like I said, the stats show that not only did the jabs not work, but the more jabs you took, the sicker you got. 
How did the government of Canada respond in June when it turned to 90%? Did they come out and say, okay, we failed, the jab was a big, big mistake, and we're sorry for ruining the lives of millions and millions of people and adding hundreds of billions to our debt and a rampant inflation crisis for decades to come? No, you know what they said? There's no more tab called vaccine outcomes. They literally removed the statistics from the internet and replaced it with a new safe one called vaccine statistics, where you click on it. Sorry guys, I've been apparently talking too long. I do that. I'm just speaking to people for hours. Sorry guys. So And I know you guys are going to want to see me, so I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be right over there by the table, so come by, come over. And there's one more thing I'm going to leave you with. Everybody keeps asking me, what do I do to wake people up? And I do with this, I'm talking. Everybody has their own ability that can wake people up. I went to an event called for United Artists for Freedom in, in England, and they had people doing comedy, people doing poems, people doing songs, people sharing life experiences. The point is, everybody used the biggest weapon in, the, in, our, in our favor. And that weapon is the speak, spoken word. And everybody has the ability to wake up people. If you write a crappy song and a thousand people listen to it and you only woke up one person, you still did your part. So everybody has that ability. And for all you people that are too afraid to use that spoken word, that's why I created this merch. It does the talking for you. When you wear this, you're not just representing the freedom movement, you're literally making people ask questions. And all the people that are obedient are obedient because they refuse to ask questions. So when you provoke that in them, you gave them the first step to waking up. And that's every single person's responsibility here. It's not just to say no to all these tyrannical things. It's to wake up everybody you know. And to get all those people, especially the ones that have taken a jab, back on our side of the fence. And when we do that, and when we show unity around the world, not only can we not be beaten, we can reshape the world in an image that we would all want to live in, and not the one that they want to make for us. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Please come to another one. Oh, wait. One more thing. I need that. I need the, uh, I need the uh, receipt. I gave it to you. Oh, well, somebody stole it, and I'm going to go get it. We have a copy here of one of the energy bills that has been rising exponentially across Holland. And today we had made a fire and we were asking everybody to go there and burn it. However, the police decided that we're not allowed to have a fire because they didn't want to see thousands of people running over there and burning their bills because that could turn into millions of people running around and burning their bills. Well, guess what? We don't need a big fire for thousands of people to burn their bills. Every single one of you can grab a lighter right now, like this, like this, and burn these friggin' bills. And that's all you gotta do. Light it. Light it. There you go. That's how much government has control. Nothing. There you go, I'm breaking the law. This is how much control the government has. Everybody, burn your bills. Everybody, stop complying and reach out to those that you thought you lost. You did not lose them, they are simply lost. But you can help them find your way, you can help them become part of the solution, and together we can create a golden era all across the world for generations to come. And thank you guys, I love you all.